of a block, not by default. We have seen uh, once or twice, I don't know if you um, actually recognize it, use. Instead of let, we say use. And this means that this um, stuff here returns something that implements i disposable. And then something is, out, is i disposable. And when you leave the block, this use block, either through a return or through an exception, then you will um, dispose, call this dispose function at the end before leaving its code. And this and all .NET functions which um, have some unmanaged resources, so something different from memory, um, like network sockets, like database connections, um, like file handles, like completion ports, events, named pipes, whatever, uh, implement this iDisposable interface and then call this um, release function on that. Close the file and uh, close the database connection. And because use is, has even the same length as let, um, it's quite convenient to use. Which was an unintended pun, sorry. Um, now, eager evaluation. Um, Haskell is easily evalu evaluated. Nothing is evaluated at all until, well, until we really, really, really want to. In ML, like in OCaml, like in Scheme, like in practically every language out there, um, things are evaluated as <coughs> soon as the program reaches the point. Um, yeah, the object orientation is .NET style. I already told you about that. Single implementation, multiple interface, single di dispatch dynamic polymorphism. Um, what does it mean? Your virtual function is only virtual with respect to the first argument, that is. You cannot be virtual with respect to two or three arguments. Like this is then called open multi methods, like in common Lisp, like in uh, Clojure. If somebody is interested in that, I might explain it afterwards. But not available in F sharp and probably never will be. Um, and static overloading, so um, static polymorphism, of course, at compile time on all arguments. Only for .NET type members, not for F# -sharp current arguments. If you use F# -sharp modules, if you use current functions, which is the convenient way to write F# -sharp, you don't have overloading. But it's not a problem because you have um, discriminated unions and types where you say this type can be either an integer or a float or an interface of this specific class, and then I write a function which has a match on all possibilities of the discriminated union. Um, this sounds not so convenient, but actually is um, because you can cross class hierarchies with that type, and actually you don't build class hierarchies anymore. Most of the times, um, discriminated unions are enough. There are no type classes in um, F# -sharp, which is really uh, bad, but it doesn't work well with this um, .NET type system. But that's the runtime reflection, yeah, that's the boring part. Syntax, you saw the syntax. OCaml plus Python plus operated uh, overloading on steroids, which I really haven't covered yet, and I probably won't, um, is the F-sharp syntax. And about the virtual machine. Kind of a ready function. Uh, a what function? Um, um, a uh, function with very number of arguments. Only with .NET style methods. Okay. <laughs> and this is actually something which is bad because if you would be able to um, define um, functions with a rival arity, arity is the word I yeah. um, and do so uh, in a type safe way where you can overload. Uh, through type arguments, the types that you could uh, write stuff like printfn yourself, yeah. and even cooler stuff, of course. Um, yeah. But it seems not to be possible currently. Okay. But as I said, I am not an expert in Sharp yet, and, <laughs> 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 and so maybe there exists some possibility. But I only know for, uh, it for the .NET functions. Of course, you can define your own .NET style uh, uh, variable area.
similarity um, methods, but not of not the cool version. Okay. Okay. Virtual machine. We have the .NET VM from Microsoft. We have Mono, and this is actually quite good because it means it's faster than Python, it's faster than Perl, it's faster than Ruby, it's faster than Java, it's faster than practically everything except all the good stuff. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we more or less, we have C, we have B, we have C++, we have Erlang, we have Haskell, we have um, Go. Go, yeah, and Lul, PyPy. Yeah, PyPy, not many people use that part. Yeah. Copy Drop replacement. <laughs> yeah. So, but actually it performs usually within a factor two of um, C++ code um, for speed uh, for CPU time for memory of course it's worse uh, memory on uh, 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 FTAB is quite memory heavy it likes to cons a lot but well maybe it's just my style of writing programs so I don't know yet but. Um, the garbage collector of the VM even on mono is actually quite okay um, it is generational, it is incremental, it is precise, it is mostly concurrent, it has pair of red fragments for fast allocation in multi-threaded programs, it support on, uh, this is supported on 32 and 64-bit um, platforms, on Windows, on Linux, on macOS, so the garbage collector is acceptable. And yeah, no global interpreter log, thank you very much. And about morality, Mono is open source? The Sharp compiler and the core library is open source. Many uh, Sharp libraries are open source. And open source um, in the OSI way of open source, so you are allowed to uh, make your own derivations, you are allowed to share your own changes. And um, most of it is, I think, Apache style. So um, it's quite easy to use in commercial projects, but quite easy to use in um, open source projects. As for the most of the part, and the good part is, um, compared to Java, it's actually currently improving. So the biggest change in F# -sharp library availability and in F# -sharp development has happened within the last year, and not within uh, a few years ago. And since the Oracle disaster, um, well, it doesn't look that well for its main competitor, Morgan. And type deduction, forget about type deduction. Um, forget about numbers, except maybe we have an arbitrary precision integer, we have an arbitrary precision rational. Um, and per default? The default integer is like this? No. Okay. It's big int. Um, big int, um, here I wrote it in big int, but actually it's all lowercase. Big int, sorry. And big rational is um, just a syntax where I write. Um, with n suffix to an integer with um, slash for uh, division and an integer with n suffix. And, by the, and this way you have an arbitrary precision rational. Quite great for all those people who started with real programming languages like this and <laughs> who actually want to have that. But I have to admit big rational is only available if you um, say use, uh, if you open the F sharp power back, it's probably only integrated in the next version of F sharp. But this also shows you that you can make your own literal types which um, with your own suffixes as part of a library. Which is convenient. Um, text, yeah, we have characters and strings, which is always Unicode. Um, aggregates, just that you know the names of all the part. Records is with uh, name, um, um, column, type specified. We have tuples, we have lists, we have arrays. All those are available as part, as direct initialization in the code. Um, of course, they all map to classes in the background. But for this you have uh, convenient syntax. And also, for this you have pattern matching and destructuring, which I will show uh, soon. Type deduction. But do you want something about the type deduction? Well, yes, okay. The thing is, okay, we have an integer list, um, we have a string list, we have a do something function which takes one argument f. 
you have an integer list, and this is the up operator, which is the append operator. You take a list and append another list to it. And then we take the string list, and then we map each item of this list by using this f function. And at the end, we convert this sequence to a list again. Because we only can append a list to a list, we cannot append a sequence to a list. So what type does do something have and what type does f have? Well, do something has the type, um, I get an f of type string to int projection, projected to an int list. So do something is a projection from a projection to a list. And this function here itself has string and integer. And of course it must be string and integer because we have an int list and we append another list. So the other list must also be an integer list. And because this does not change the type, and here we have strings, we know string in, integer out, and therefore we know that this f must be a function which takes an integer, uh, which takes a string and puts out an integer. And this does the compiler for you. You don't have to write anything yourself. And that's actually really convenient. Um, type deduction failures. I promised I, uh, F sharp is not perfect. .NET has overloading of methods. And overloading means that I have one and the same name for different kinds of parameters. And here I have some array which has some class, an array of some class. Okay. Then I say some array dot all, which says which returns true if the predicate returns true for all items. And this works. And then I say some array dot s queryable, which is this link function that I called, uh, what I told you about, where you can query over object, um, uh, over objects in memory. And then this fails. And the reason for this is that all uses a link expression, um, which, and this expression has several constructors, and so the overload is ambiguous, because for F sharp, this could be a delegate of F sharp style, a delegate of C sharp style, or an expression of F sharp style, or an expression of C sharp style, and that's too much. So it's ambiguous. And then we get this extremely helpful um, error message. Look up an object of indeterminate type based on information prior to this program. And exactly what it tells you to do is definitely not the most helpful part of what you should do. Um, they would make G plus plus on the better <laughs> It's not as bad as type classes in Haskell. <laughs> and it's not as bad as C++ templates. No, it isn't. <laughs> but basically, um, look up an object of indeterminate type means I don't know what this should be. And so, what shall I do? There is, exact, uh, there is a very simple workaround for that. There exists um, a sharp um, queryable extensions they are as soon as you say not only all but all q for all queryable, it then has enough information to deduce the type. Because um, you more or less remove the delegate overloads and then it's already um, good enough for the F-sharp compiler to determine what it should do. But of course, if you don't know it, and you happen to see this for the first time, you spend two hours of searching. Um, yeah, Automatic generalization. Um, just so that you know this word. Me, transform me, f me. Transform me is a value um, which takes a function from a string to any type, which returns any type itself. This again is an apostrophe and in, again indicates a type, a uh, type argument to this function. And because there is actually no restriction what f could do, except that it needs to take one argument and return a value, um, this is exactly what f sharp uh, derives as a type of this. So in f sharp, most of the time in c sharp, we always have to explicitly write uh, stuff as generic. 
in F sharp, it's generic by default. 